Welcome back to Light for the Long Dark with your host, Commander Tom, where I am trying to give you the tips and tricks to help you survive to live to see tomorrow. If uh, guidance like that is something you're interested, leave a like and subscribe. I drop videos like this often. As you can tell, we are not in our uh, Long Dark Labs up in Pleasant Valley. We are in the camp office at Mystery Lake because today I want to focus on leveling up your furs and your skills quickly, simply, and easily. And I think Mystery Lake is one of the best locations to do that. As you can tell, I've already got a collection of furs literally curing up because hunting is probably one of the first skills that you want to focus on to get the equipment you need to level up with. My favorite reason for Mystery Lake is ice hunting <laughs> from the safety of fishing hunts. This gives you a safe vantage point to really stack up the dogs and if you play things smart, stack up the bears too. And you're getting both of the predators furs as well as a ton of meat for your trouble. So that's a great start to any game. Now once you start to stack up uh, the skins, mostly wolves and deer, if you're lucky a bear, then obviously as you process those animals you're going to start to uh, stack up the parts. Especially once you get the guts actually fully cured up, like what we have here. Then the first item I recommend you build from your uh, animal products would actually be to start building up snares with a gut and reclaimed wood because even though you are gathering animal meats, you got to keep in mind with the predator meats, especially wolf and bear, that there is a uh, risk involved with that risk of intestinal parasites. Now, one piece a day is extremely manageable. It's usually 1%. And I eat that one I eat that one piece a day and then wait for it to phase off usually 24 hours later. But in the meantime, I'm still trying to keep my calories up. And that's where the venison, but also rabbit meat comes in very handy. Now, Trapper's Cabin is well known for having a uh, rabbit uh, spawning area directly neat next to it. And of course there is the uh, rabbit spawn area on the walk around the lake to Carter Dam. But there's a third spot that I don't think is talked about near enough. Most of us are familiar with the cave that is at the top of the hill right next to the camp office. But most of us are aware that you have to do like a double rope climb to get up there. Well, if you're willing to do a little bit of exploring and a little bit of walking, no, that's not your only option. In fact, there's an easier option that is less tiring and is actually safer because you don't walk through any anything right about wolf now. territory. I do this for my daily run. I've actually gotten myself up to a well-fed bonus because, well, when you're hunting and killing the animals, you might as well get the bonus going. Especially since I think next episode uh, I'm going to make a run over to Pleasant Valley for the heavy hammer and on the way back gather coal. I've got a few pieces of uh, scrap metal and uh, I want to start getting some arrowheads made up and then... I basically don't really need a rifle. If I can uh, move over to the lighter weight and reusability of the bow and arrow, that's the long game that I really enjoy. Now, one thing you want to keep an eye on, I've kind of left some markers here with uh, tinder muddles, is try to stay off of the bluer snow. Try to stay on to the whiter stuff because that is going to be what uh, uh, white is safe, blue tends to be uh, the injury making stuff. That blue up snow tends to give you the uh, glass ankles that you yeah, wind up you know, injuring your ankles and wrists over. 
for additional guidance, I drop uh, tinder bundles to help mark the way, where to turn and stuff. And then right up here over this final edge will be that uh, cave on top of the hill here. And all you had to do was Surrounded walk by up snow, and nothing to drink. Here's another thing to kind of think of as well. You want to make sure you've got a couple of uh, traps on here. Now this is the first time in a long time that I've been skunked and not trapped anything. And I mean that. Give me a second, let me post you a few screen pics of this world just a couple days earlier. And uh, I've dropped uh, several uh, rabbits right here. Now, if you need a frame of reference of uh, which cave I'm talking about on Mystery Lake, because I acknowledge there's a couple, and this is the one that you come up the uh, two rope climbs to get to, and when you slip inside of the uh, cave up here at the top, then you are greeted with usually some firewood materials, but also this gentleman who didn't make it. And when I came in here this the first good, time, man. I was greeted with uh, some niceties, you know, soda and book, but what I was most excited about was a Polaroid. And I'm even lucky enough that it's actually a Polaroid for this map, where I've got to go back to the Forestry Lookout. So that'll be a future episode as well, just to get that magnification boost from Forestry. Let's talk a little bit about the critical gear that you want to see if you can gather before you really start to settle into workshop here. Obviously, the most important thing you're probably going to want to make sure you've got is a rifle with as much ammunition as you can find because you're going to need something to help take down those initial animals. The second item that's going to help you the most, actually, is going to be the magnifying lens because this is going to be what lets you have free fire at least when the sun allows it. Now, there's two major skills that we really want to focus on while we're here leveling up at Mystery Valley. Two major skills we really want to try and focus up on is fire starting, which we'd like to get to fire starting level 3, because that way you don't have to futz with tinder. Now if you can get yourself to a 4 or 5 doing this process, please be my guest. But you should be able to at least get yourself up to fire starting level 3 because you're going to have an awful lot of meat that you need to cook and you need the fire to do that. One thing I recommend to do is to go ahead and set up a campfire right outside the back door. The primary reason I recommend that uh, outside fire pit is for time effectiveness. You want to be as efficient as possible as fast as possible. So out here you take a piece of meat, something that takes about an hour to cook, and of course, please remember to put enough fire onto the fire to actually have it process. Don't let your fires go out. But provided you've got that taken care of, drop a piece of meat on there, it takes about an hour. Hop back in here, go on up to the workshop, make sure you've got the materials you need, but then go ahead and put an hour's worth of work on whatever it is you're trying to build. Go ahead and uh, work through that hour, and then once you're done with that hour, we come on out again, we take a look at the time. Some things uh, need a little bit longer than an hour to cook, but that's fine. Take a look here. Yeah, like the wolf needs, yeah, just a couple more minutes. So we go ahead and check out the water. Keep in mind you are going to want to build up your water supply here because, kind of thirsty. well, there's no reason to go thirsty. Then our wolf is ready to be uh, eaten. We grab another piece of raw meat, and the cycle just continues. It's a little bit busier. It makes time go by a little bit quicker, but it does make you very productive, both with building your furs as with uh, building up your cooking skill. Another tip I'll give you is, especially when you've started in the fire outside with a magnifying lens, don't be bashful about grabbing a torch to bring that fire indoors, especially at the end of the day when you're settling up to settle in it for the night. 
go ahead and uh, bring that uh, all the way up to the furnace that you're working at. That way you can go ahead and have more fire from the single solar start. And in fact, in doing this method, you are actually starting more fires to get that uh, points higher, quicker, and faster. All right, so let's do a side-by-side -side comparison to see what the fruit of labor is when you uh, dedicate a... Uh... All right, so let's take a moment and see what the last week has produced for me. I have averaged an hour a day for a week, so you could probably get this done in a weekend if you so chose. I walked into Mystery Lake Camp office with uh, a warmth bonus of only plus 16 degrees windproof bonus of only plus four degrees and protection of nine percent by just really working the equation really focusing on animals and furs and crafting and skill building i am walking out of the camp office with plus 29 degrees warmth bonus plus 16 degrees windproof bonus and my protection has skyrocketed now up to 39%. That is very respectable progress for just grinding for a few days. That's something I think any gamer can appreciate and be proud of. Now there's a final decision that uh, we need to discuss on what we built. If you're lucky enough to bag two bear skins, do you go for the cloak or do you go for the bedroll? Well, it's personal choice, obviously, but here's the reasoning behind my thoughts. Number one, the cloak is sick is 12 pounds. The bedroll is six. Any kind of spawned in bedroll that you discover is usually a lower percentage. I've seen 80s, my currently is down to 68. Whereas when you make a bedroll, you get it at 100%. Additionally, there's the question, of what are you going to play? I am going to be playing the pursuit of the faithful cartographer. I'm looking to go the entire map of Great Bear Island. And that includes some pretty cool terrain, most notably Timberwolf Mountain, as well as Hush River Valley. I greatly appreciate the idea that with all of my skins and my skin bedroll, I can still sleep through the night and live to see the next day. That's my personal decision. You guys comment down below. Did I screw up? Should I have gone with the bearskin cloak? What do you think? What do you usually decide when you've got two bearskins available for you to process? I'd love to know. And of, and of course, let's not forget the skills that you carry with you that you don't have to craft but earn along the way. I am up to fire starting level 3, so that means I don't need any tinder. I'm at about 4.3, which means I'm getting very close to not having to worry about uh, the uh, illnesses from eating uh, predator meat. I did get carcass harvesting up to level 4. When you're harvesting that many rabbits and as well as other animals, that helps very quickly. And the rest of the skills I'm not supremely worried about. Ice fishing, firearm... Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I'd love to be a better shot with firearms, but I'm playing soccer right now, so ammunition is low, and I'm not really wanting to um, try to waste the ammunition just for my target practice, so to speak. And archery, I haven't built the equipment yet to start getting the points on, but archery is the game that I'm trying to move us into as quickly as possible. Which I guess brings me back to the central question that I would truly love your input for the next episode. I have a choice. I can either start making my way over to Pleasant Valley to get the hammer and uh, coal over at uh, Trapper's Cabin to Cave, or I can uh, check out what the Polaroid would reveal from the top of uh, the lookout again now that I found the picture. I would honestly appreciate your input. Should I go for archery first or should I go for the Polaroid expansion first? Comment down below. I look forward to reading your comments. I look forward to our next video together. 
If you want me to live to see tomorrow, leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see more, that's what the playlists are for. I'm Commander Tom, and I will see you next time. Thanks.